In commercial buildings, the outside columns are usually placed hard against the site boundaries to maximize use of land because commercial land is very expensive. The column sits right on the edge of the footing, causing eccentric loading and extremely high soil bearing pressure. Depending on the loading and soil bearing capacity, this condition will result in excessively large pad footings. You might also come across a situation like that in residential buildings, but it's less likely to happen as most councils have setback rules. However, I'm sure you have seen a builder installing an offset steel column in a board pier in residential projects, and the idea here is the same. In today's video, we're going to see how we can tackle this problem and drastically reduce the volume of concrete in the footings. Basically, what's happening here is that the column center line is not aligned with the centroid of the footing, and this eccentricity will result in bending moment in the pad footing, which in turn will tend to rotate in this way. And the same happens to an SHS column sitting on a board pier in residential projects. If the load is high enough and the soil bearing capacity is poor, it may result in a rotation like this. So how can we resolve this eccentricity issue? One of the solutions for this problem is to connect the eccentric footing to another footing with a beam. This beam is normally called strap footing. The name doesn't really matter, you can call it strip footing, beam, ground beam. What really matters is that you understand how this system works and that you size this beam properly. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But firstly, notice that now in order to rotate the pad footing, I will have to rotate my whole system, which will be way harder if you have enough weight coming down on the other pad footing. Same idea applies to the board pier case. I will have to rotate my whole system in order to rotate that eccentric board pier. And depending on the case, you will have to run beams in different directions from the board pier because the pier is circular. Now let's have a look at the engineering principles behind this system. Due to the eccentric load, we would have a varying pressure distribution under the pad footing. In other words, we would have to design the footing for a massive bearing pressure, which would result in an excessively large pad footing. On the other hand, if we install a beam connecting the eccentric pad footing to another concentric pad footing, we would obtain a uniform bearing pressure under the footing because now the centroid of the two footings will coincide with the resultant of the column loads. The way you design this structural system is quite simple. It can be represented by a simple beam overhanging one support and the cantilever end will have a length equal to the eccentricity. The load P2 from column 2 will act right on top of the support 2 and P1 from column 1 will act on the end of the cantilever. These loads will generate a negative bending moment on the beam which will have to be designed for. Let's do a quick example together. Imagine we have a 1 meter long pad footing so divide that by 2 and we get 500 millimeters eccentricity. Therefore, the cantilever end will be 500 millimeters. Let's suppose we have another column 3 meters away from this one. I'm going to apply P1 at the end at the cantilever end, which will be 500 kilonewtons, and the load coming from column 2 will be called P2, which is 300 kilonewtons. I'm going to choose material and section properties here, but it will not make any difference for this example. Notice how the beam will deflect upwards, and here we get the reaction values that we're going to use to design the pad footing. Did you notice that the beam is actually alleviating the load you need to design the pad footing to? Instead of designing the pad footing for 300 kN, you will have to design it for 216 kN. But what's the catch here? Well, 
if you don't have enough load coming down on column 2 you will get an uplift here and we can demonstrate this by deleting P2 and see that now we have a downward reaction usually there will be enough loads but it's just something to bear in mind and after that we can check the bending moment and shear diagrams so we can design the strap beam and use the reactions to design the pad footings as well so the detailing of this system would look like something like this we have the reinforcement for pad footing 2 in the bottom pad footing 1 I usually do reinforcement top and bottom due to the high negative bending moment you can argue that the beam will suffice but I like installing top reinforcement here then we have the longitudinal reinforcement for the beam the top one is the main bars and also don't forget the legs for the shear force I usually make the pad footing the same depth as the beam because if the beam starts from the middle of the pad footing you can you might create a cracking plane um, at least that's what I believe you you might um, think differently you can leave a comment below and that's that was it for today I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching again and I'll see you next time